Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 13 for February the 23rd, 2020. We're still in Unit 3, entitled Jesus Teaches About True Worship. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Making the Request. Our devotion reading is taken from Psalm 13. Our background scripture is taken from Luke chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 13. And our print passage today, uh, where our lesson text will take place, uh, comes from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. Our key verse reads, I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. That's taken from Luke chapter 11, verse 9 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore the meaning of Jesus' exhortation to ask, seek, and knock. Secondly, to long for God to give the Holy Spirit uh, the greatest possible gift. And then thirdly, to commit to make daily prayer a vital aspect of your life. We have three outlines today that will be part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled, An Example. The second outline is entitled, An Explanation. And then the third outline is entitled, An Exposition. And so I am humbled today, as always, in thanking and praising God for yet another opportunity to share his word with you uh, through our Sunday School lesson. Uh, we always encourage uh, that you will get your Bible and um, be prepared to take some scripture references and, and also notes that we will uh, share with you as we engage in this lesson today. Uh, we want to uh, get into a little bit of this biblical uh, context is quite lengthy but I will share a portion of it that uh, just talks about um, uh, the um, the prayers if you will of uh, of the disciples uh, for the last couple of weeks uh, we were looking at uh, the model prayer taken from uh, Matthew chapter 6 and so today we are touching on uh, more teachings from Jesus according to Luke's gospel um, uh, concerning uh, how to pray or making the request but this biblical context um, uh, helps us to understand the focus of prayer in the two parables is someone else's need for bread as well as our own needs for spiritual nourishment so as we delve into the lesson uh, let us not neglect the power of persistent prayer and that is one of the keys in this lesson uh, today uh, is talking about persistence as Jesus teaches about this prayer and then he also uh, the uh, key point that I want to lift and share with you today is being bold or boldness in prayer and so you might see uh, some scripture reference um, in Hebrews chapter 11 uh, verse 6 and then Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and so we also want to share with you uh, some of the uh, aspects of prayer we're going to lift some things today and we're not telling you uh, that uh, uh, how you pray is wrong but we are sharing some vital information according to Jesus teaching uh, about prayer but God made us and redeemed us uh, for fellowship with himself and prayer is an important part uh, of that relationship uh, God speaks to us in and through the contents of the Bible uh, which the Holy Spirit opens up and applies to us um, and enables us to understand. So uh, we then speak to God about himself, ourselves, and people uh, in his world, uh, shaping what we say as response to what he has said. So this unique uh, form of two-way conversation 
continues uh, as long as life lasts. So we want to remember that about prayer. And so uh, two uh, aspects of prayer that we engage in quite often uh, are petitions. And we could get into a lengthy discussion about petitions, but I hope you will do your own uh, research uh, in uh, various types of petitions and, and you will find uh, scripture reference uh, for uh, those resources. Um, and also, um, we also want to mention that another aspect of our prayer is uh, intercession. And so that's when we uh, represent to God the needs and concerns of others. So again, uh, we hope that you will uh, do your due diligence to um, research those aspects of prayer. But something that I wanted to mention as we talk about these two aspects of prayer that uh, Matthew lifts uh, from uh, the sixth chapter and as we deal with uh, the gospel according to Luke. I don't want us to miss the the audience that Jesus is uh, uh, addressing in the Sermon on the Mount uh, that goes back to Matthew chapter 5 and also from Luke's Gospel the 11th chapter and I want to read this from uh, just as we get into our first outline today because I think it's important uh, as we understand the audience uh, that Jesus is addressing today and that's very important for us as believers and so that prompts me to ask you this question where are you in the body of Christ where are you in the body of Christ that's very important uh, when we think about the fact that we have to pray and we think about the fact that uh, uh, we may or may not have confidence uh, uh, in our prayers and there is a relational aspect to this lesson and we hope to lift that today but let's move quickly to Luke chapter 11 and I want to start this at verse 1 this is not our printed text from the first outline but it is a, it's a lead in to that and I just want to share this with you and the Bible says now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place uh, when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Verse 2, so he said to them, when you pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so this is a, uh, a lead in to our uh, outline today as an example from Luke chapter uh, 11 um, verses 5 through 7. But I want to note here, in, as we deal with this model prayer, that Jesus is talking to his disciples. And so uh, that is relevant for us today to understand, are we followers of Jesus Christ? Uh, are we in a relationship with Jesus Christ? And so the devotional reading that I gave you in Psalm 13 pairs very well with Luke's approach to his gospel as a whole. Uh, as he deals with the relationship or salvation uh, um, that has been uh, brought to humankind. And it's very important that we understand where we are uh, in terms of our walk with the Lord or the relationship that we have uh, with the Lord. And so then when we begin to make petitions of God, we're coming from a place of understanding. We're coming from a place of confidence. We're coming from a place that is actually the reality of, of how we engage God and how we live in, in community or relationship with God. If that is not the case, if we are not in a relationship with the Lord through Jesus Christ, then how does that shape our prayers and what exactly are we saying to God and how confident are we 
uh, in the petitions or, or the intercessor, intercessory prayers that we might make to God. So this is something that Matthew and Luke uh, both share with us that Jesus is teaching his disciples um, uh, uh, how to pray and then the disciples are tagged to share with the world at large. So I just want to share that with you and so but the Bible teaches us that if anyone does not have the Holy Spirit uh, that person does not belong to Christ. I want you to look at uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 9 and so in the triune Godhead the Holy Spirit is the divine distributor. I want you also to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, verse 11 so of the good things uh, purchased uh, by the Son I also want you to look at Ephesians chapter 4 uh, verses 7 and 8 and then these things are ordained by the Father and you'll see reference in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 so it's this is something that as believers we need to understand how the uh, the Godhead works uh, and quite frankly uh, the 8th chapter of the book of Romans tells us that we don't know how to pray as we ought but the Spirit himself intercedes on behalf of the saints so the Holy Spirit is relevant uh, uh, to engaging us or to unctioning us into worshipful prayer he is also instrumental in uh, uh, helping us to pray in the will of God we'll talk about that a little bit later so let's get into this first outline entitled an example this is taken from uh, uh, Luke chapter 11 verses 5 through 7 so now that we've had this uh, prelude if you will from Luke chapter 11 verses 1 through 4 the Bible says and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves verse 6 for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him verse 7 and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not uh, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed I cannot rise and give thee so what is Jesus teaching here this parable if you will uh, chosen is intriguing as Jesus spoke to his inner circle of disciples about a need uh, the parable does not say that you have a friend in need but rather that you are in need and have a friend to whom you go at midnight and from whom you request to borrow three loaves of bread so uh, the fact that Jesus noted that it is a friend of which you are asking bread at such a late hour indicates uh, Jesus attempt to get the disciples to grasp grasp the relational connection between them uh, in the parable and the friend from whom they seek bread so this is what I was sharing with you earlier uh, as we talked about and laid um, uh, uh, the foundation of the relational aspect of this parable and of Jesus teaching here and so uh, the reason for the uh, late night need is explained in verse 6 uh, as another friend has arrived has arrived late to your house after a long journey and there's nothing to feed him uh, so in the example Jesus gave the short answer that most folk would give someone knocking uh, uh, on their door at midnight uh, you might say go away uh, for we are asleep the door is closed and my children are with me and so the earlier notation of a friend is noted by Jesus here with a quick response from a friend to gain the attention uh, of the disciples for uh, while we consider the response possibly normal we would expect the friend at least to entertain the request so Jesus response here from the friend is that he is in bed and will not get up to even check to see if he has any bread to give and so the example is one that would poke at even the exclusive culture created by the Jews of the time who would at least uh, uh, tend to one another's needs. So we're going to get a little bit more uh, into this explanation as to 
uh, this parable here, but this is how uh, um, uh, we expect God to respond to us. Rather, we are uh, uh, making a specific petition of, of, uh, for ourselves, or we are interceding on behalf of someone else. So these types of situations come up, uh, but, and, and we expect God to engage. We expect God to hear and answer prayer. We expect God to, uh, 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 to do these things that we are re requesting of him because we are in a relationship with him. And I want you to keep that in mind uh, as we talk about these parables because they need to be broken down. And this is what I love about Jesus' teaching. Uh, he puts things on a level uh, where the audience or the disciples can discern how to handle these situations. But again, he wanted them to grasp the relational connection, right? And so we don't want to forget that. So the question is asked here, how would you handle a late night request from a friend? How should God handle uh, uh, our late hour request? Uh, are we praying to God from a posture of a relationship or are we praying for some uh, 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 praying to God uh, from the standpoint of being a complete stranger to him and that's very important uh, in our prayers and so uh, uh, we would hope uh, that all of us need to understand that the relationship uh, uh, that we have with Jesus Christ is key to our prayers uh, keep in mind that we w we could talk about this from John chapter 14, uh, John chapter 15, and, and, and actually John chapter 16. Uh, uh, but we are praying in the name of Jesus. Why is that? We are not going to God on our own. We're going in, uh, uh, to, in prayer uh, to the Father in the name of his Son who died on the cross, signaling to God that we have accepted that name or we have uh, ascribed to that name as Lord and Savior of our lives and so how does that work that we're uh, 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 praying to God in the name of Jesus it it, 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 it lines up with scripture which is how uh, Jesus taught his disciples to pray uh, in John chapter 15 so we need to keep these things in mind. And if we're not in a relationship with God, we need to get into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ so we will have access to God through prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope that makes sense to you. And, and, and so it's important to understand this is what Jesus is teaching the disciples to do. Uh, this is something that his sermon was founded on or uh, that he spoke about in uh, Matthew uh, chapters 5 through 7 is the entirety of that sermon. Uh, but again, Luke lifts the same thing that uh, 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 a disciple asked uh, to be taught. And we have to teach, we have to instruct individuals uh, uh, how to pray. Uh, I remember some years ago uh, as a child, as a boy growing up in the church, I would always hear uh, the elders, uh, when they were asking people to pray, they would preface it by saying, those of you who can get a prayer through. And I, I didn't know uh, for a long time what that meant, but I came to understand that those individuals who were able to get a prayer through were individuals who were in a relationship with God, who knew the Word of God, whose lifestyle lined up with the Word of God, so they used all of these things, if you will, uh, uh, as uh, uh, instruments or tools or mechanisms to engage God in prayer. In other words, God, I know you in the pardon of, I, uh, of my sins. God, I know you said in your word this, that, and the other. God, I know that Jesus died. It, it, so you can see where I'm going with this, but uh, those individuals uh, were living. They had uh, 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 set apart or sanctified lives unto God and so when they went in prayer they were confident that they could get that prayer through and we don't talk about this a lot uh, 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 you know in terms of 
uh, in our local churches about the confidence we have. Everybody's talking about prayer, but the central uh, uh, fact of the matter is uh, are we confident in our prayers? Uh, are we confident that we are praying in the will of God? Do we even know what that is? But these are the types of things that uh, if Jesus is teaching us uh, how to pray or this teaching the disciples uh, how to pray, uh, in my mind, this would constitute what is in his will for us to do or how to do or uh, providing us with some examples or some models, if you will, on how to engage. So uh, if we're not going to uh, honor the teachings of Christ, uh, I believe he would know best how to get in touch with the Father, whether it was a petition or or of our own or, or intercessory prayer or what have you. I think he would know best how to instruct us to to get a prayer through if you will so uh, i hope that we accept his teachings uh, uh as models and uh and and so we can build on our confidence in prayer that god is going to do the very thing uh, that we ask of him to do the second outline is entitled an explanation this is taken from luke chapter 11 verses 8 through 10 i want to read this from the ni uh uh V translation Jesus is still talking I tell you even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship yet because of your shameless audacity he will surely get up and give you as much as you need verse 9 so I say to you ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you uh, verse 10 for everyone who asks receives uh, the one who uh, seeks finds and the one who knocks the door will be open so now we get further explanation or details of this parable so Jesus pointed out that while the sleeping friend uh, might not rise to help because the request comes from a, fr a friend he will indeed arise and give his friend as much as he might need because he has been so shameless in other words he was bold enough to come and ask so late so the un an unforgettable point of the text uh, Jesus is trying to drive home is the contrast uh, between the friend's initial ungracious response and the way God acts towards us so this is made clearer in the passage as we read how the ungracious friend who was awakened out of his sleep eventually arises to live up to the confidence placed in him uh, by his needy neighbor so if we can do this for our friends then how much more uh, can and will our heavenly father do for us and we should expect so so Jesus here confirms here that if we are bold not arrogant but confident if we are sure if you will uh, uh, that God will do or God is able to do then that is how we approach God uh, James shares with us uh, uh, shares with us in the first chapter uh, that if uh, uh, someone acts uh, lacks wisdom he should ask God but he goes on to say uh, he should not ask uh, 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 wavering or doubting he says uh, uh, that man uh, should not expect that he will receive anything so when we go to God in prayer we need to be confident in our prayers we need to be certain in our prayers not wavering not doubting as this parable outlines uh, that this individual uh, went to uh, a friend's home it's it's late uh, and he knows it's late but he's confident that he can get uh, uh, what he needs if he is persistent uh, he is confident that he is going to get an answer and so this is the type of attitude uh, that 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 uh, 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 we should be able to go to God in prayer about but here's something uh, perhaps the things that we are going to God about have already been done this is the importance of knowing what the Word of God says uh, uh, if, if, if God has already uh, 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 done some things, completed some things in your life, uh, if he has already promised 
uh, that he would provide or he would do a particular thing, uh, we need to stand on that. And so we need to be confident that God is going to do that thing. Uh, if he said it in his word, uh, he is able to bring it to pass. Uh, and so this is something I want to share with you from the first epistle of John, uh, chapter 5, uh, verses 14 and 15. I think I want to go and read that uh, because this deals directly with uh, our confidence uh, in our prayers. And it also deals with something that we really need to know, and that is the will of God. And this is something that the Holy Spirit will help you with. In other words, he will reveal to you or enlighten you as to what God wants to do in a particular matter. And so uh, uh, once you receive that revelation, uh, then you can now move on because that, that is how God is going to work that particular matter. But the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 14, John writes, uh, now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us this is something we try to teach in evangelism of understanding what God's will is for our lives what does God want as uh, uh, as opposed to what you might want I can tell you without a doubt that God wants everybody to be saved uh, I do know that God uh, wants everybody to know his son Jesus in the pardon of their sins. this is where we start uh, in terms of God's will. John chapter 3 uh, verse 16 will help us to understand. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever uh, will believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God's will was to send his son into this world that he might die for our sins that we not perish. We could say we could argue that this is the will of God that none perish. This is the will of God that you be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And so we have to start building on these things that God wants. And then so if we have, uh, as Matthew chapter 6 helps us to understand, first seek ye the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and then all of these other things will be added. We have to start with the things that God wants to do. We have to start with the things that God has put in place for us to be able to respond to. Uh, and so if we're trying to get around these things and we're going to go, in, to, go to God in prayer with, with all of these petitions and, and all of this intercessory prayer and we have not addressed the things that God has desired of us on a personal level and sometimes we have not addressed these things on a corporate level so again there are going to be struggles uh, in the pr in your prayer life because you have uh, 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 gone in an opposite direction of the will of God so God is pulling us to the cross uh, there's a general call that goes out to every man God wants all individuals to be saved to come to know him in a personal way so it means something uh, in your prayer life when you're coming from a place that you understand. So I hope that's, that this makes sense to you today that you can understand Jesus is teaching people who are following him how to practice and how to engage in prayer, effectual prayer. Keep that in mind. The question is asked here in the quarterly, do you believe you can boldly uh, that you can go boldly to God for all things share a time uh, when you did so again as we gave you uh, the first epistle of John chapter 14 chapter 5 verses 14 through 17 I should note that you know the assurance of our relationship with God produces confidence in prayer uh, so it also includes enjoyment of eternal life so continuing to believe in the name of the Son of God includes continuing uh, to practice believing prayer. I um, also want you to look at the first epistle of John chapter 3 verse 22 and then the gospel according to John chapter 14 verses 12 through 14. So the key to knowing that God hears our prayers 
is to pray according to his will. And I cannot stress that enough. We need to know what the will of God is. We need to know how to approach the will of God. And if we don't know, then those are the things that we need to go in prayer about so we can have some basic understanding, some uh, uh, tenets, if you will, of, of how we're going to go forward in prayer. Without those things, uh, uh, we will struggle mightily. It should be noted that God moves and responds to his will. It's not how long you tell God or you go in prayer to engage God to do a particular thing. Scripture is clear, I believe, from uh, Romans chapter 11 that God does all things after the counsel of his own will. And so you can't tell God what he should do. He knows what he should do. We need to understand how and what he wants to do, which his will uh, will help shape our lives and our prayers. You know, I, I can say this on a personal level. We'll move on to our final outline. That's the thing, uh, uh, one of the things in my life that have changed over the course of time since I've been saved is my prayer life. Uh, uh, I still pray quite a bit, but I'm not so much a talker as I am a listener. Uh, when I first got saved, uh, God, I talked all the time. You know, I talked a long time to God, and there's nothing wrong with that. But as time uh, moved on, God began to settle down, settle me down, and help me understand what his will was. Uh, for a particular situation or individual. So I, one of the things I've learned is to ask God uh, prior to engaging in prayer is to lead me in worship for prayer. Uh, because as scriptures are clear from Romans chapter 8, we don't know how to pray as we ought. So when I ask God to lead or to guide me in worship for prayer, that will trigger the Holy Spirit to assist me in prayer. That will uh, trigger the Holy Spirit to help me or to intercede on my behalf to uh, uh, lead me in, in, in the things that God would want to do. And so when we, when we do that, uh, uh, that is what we call worship for prayer. It, it's meaningful to God that we are seeking out direction. I think it's huge that these disciples here in Luke's gospel in the 11th chapter, they go right to Jesus and they say, teach us. Right? So he's teaching them. He's teaching them the uh, uh, fundamentals of how to pray. And sometimes uh, we don't ask God, we just engage and so uh, we may come up short because we're not seeking out the will of God for a particular situation. So uh, the last outline is entitled an exposition. This is taken from Luke chapter 11 verses 11 through 13 and again from the NIV uh, translation. Which of you fathers if your son asks for a fish will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg uh, will give him a scorpion if you then uh, if you then though you are evil know how to to give uh, good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit um, to those who ask him so the thought or the takeaway from this um, this text uh, particularly in verse 13 uh, uh, suggests that, that all of us uh, um, are inherently evil without salvation. We will conduct ourselves and this is the basis what uh, that Jesus is talking about here uh, and this is why we need to be saved right and so if we uh, uh, know how to give good gifts, um, how much more will your Father uh, in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who uh, um, ask him? And I just want to make the point here that I believe the suggestion that Jesus is making here in this statement is that uh, uh, we, re we will receive 
what is spiritually beneficial. And the Spirit of the Lord knows. Uh, I think we gave you 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, early on. And I hope you will look at that. God knows what he wants to do in your life. And this is what uh, sometimes we wrestle with God about. We want things uh, uh, that we believe are, uh, are good for us. And they uh, very well may be. But here's the question. Is it spiritually beneficial for you? Is it conducive to you growing spiritually? Uh, uh, is it something that, that's selfish? Uh, these are the types of things that uh, God gauges as we approach him. Uh, many of our requests uh, uh, will lead us astray. Many of the things that we have petitioned God for that we believe that we need bear no spiritual significance on our walk with the Lord. And so should God give us those things uh, uh, is a question that we have to ask. But Jesus wants us to know uh, in what he is teaching here how much more will our Father uh, uh, in heaven give the Holy Spirit, give things that are of the Spirit, give things that are spiritually beneficial for us uh, as people of God. And sometimes we don't think about those things. We want what we want. But God will say no and also close the door. And so these things do not promote uh, the things that God would want us to, to be about. And so uh, we don't get those things. But we can always trust God to do what's best. Not just for our pr uh, practical lives, but for our spiritual lives. We are spiritual people. And we need to be seeking to grow in that fashion as well as uh, some of the things that we would ask God for. But considering the direct obviousness of an, a degree to which it is the right response such as the same with God we should be as confident in our heavenly father uh, as a child is in his earthly father in fact we should be more so as Jesus explained it in verse 13 noting that uh, if we are evil in nature uh, and have sincere desire to give good gifts to our children and supply their needs how much more loving is our Heavenly Father who wants to give us the best gift available, the presence of Himself in us in the form of the Holy Spirit. So uh, this is huge. Uh, we need power, right? Uh, I don't know how we expect to live this life without the power of the Holy Spirit. He is that uh, 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 third member of the Godhead who applies these things to our lives, these principles, uh, these teachings. And this is something that Jesus prepared his disciples for uh, prior to uh, ascending back into heaven. Um, we understand that the Holy Spirit uh, was the promise. Uh, it was something that Jesus uh, prepared his disciples to receive. Uh, he knew that they needed it. They would need the Holy Spirit. He knew that they would need a helper. He knew that they would need further teachings. He knew that they would need protection. And on some of these things um, uh, that we overlook uh, is what sustains us. And so, uh, quite frankly, if you don't uh, have enough power, did you ask for it? Uh, and so uh, God is able to quicken you and quicken you again. So uh, I hope that we engage God in this way to uh, get the spiritual things that we need. Some of us as believers, we need to be able to see we're having issues with our sight, with our discernment. These are things we can pray about. Uh, uh, some of us are struggling with our hearing. Uh, we're not able to discern uh, 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 the Spirit of God. We're having uh, uh, issues with our uh, understanding. The, so these, these are mind issues that, that uh, uh, God needs to sort out for us. Though. So there are a lot of things that we could talk to God about. Uh, and so this is something the Apostle uh, Paul figured out. Uh, he said, I would rather boast about my weaknesses that the power of God may rest upon me. I think that's huge. When we go in prayer, we need to talk to God about our weaknesses, things that we know 
His scripture has told us that we will need. We have to live in a sinful world. If you look at John chapter 17, Jesus prayed uh, that God would not take the disciples out of the world, but he would leave them and keep them. In other words, protect them. And so we need these uh, uh, components as we live uh, uh, in this sinful world. And we need to be a part, an active part of the body of Christ. We need to be equipped to function as members of the body of Christ. Uh, there's no such thing as a bench member. You do not find that gift in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but you would find a whole section about things that the Holy Spirit gives to those, equips them for ministry and for service. And so if we uh, don't uh, ask God about these things, uh, then we seem to fall short. So I hope that you can understand here that two things we want to take away from this lesson today as we said earlier we want to be persistent in prayer we want to be bold in prayer and we certainly want to know where we are in the body of Christ I can't stress that enough you need to know where you are in your relationship with the Lord so your prayers will be able to draw from that position this is something that the book of Romans lifts uh, uh, at quite quite a, a great length about drawing from your position in the body of Christ. You could read that entire book at your leisure uh, and just see the aspects of what the Apostle Paul is laying out uh, for the saints. And so we move to our closing prayer. Today, Lord, we come humbly as a united body, but pleading on an individual level. We want a closer, more personal walk with you Draw us closer to you. Teach us to seek your will, your Holy Spirit, and your presence with us daily. This is our prayer, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we hope, trust, and pray that you've been encouraged today, that you've been edified today, and we've given you some scripture to, uh, in your private time, to do your own research and your study and see what the Lord will unlock for you as we engage him in worshipful prayer. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.